Guys and welcome to you all. Uh, yes, today we are actually looking at our fellowship. Fellowship and the leading scripture for us today is coming from our Hebrews 10 verses 24 to 25 supported by Matthew uh, 18 verse 20. Uh, yes, I'll pray briefly before we start. Uh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for the day. We thank you, Father, for appointing us to come together as we have done so, Father. We are ready for you. May you touch our hearts and minds. Open our hearts and minds to our understanding of your scripture. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Yes, just as I say today, we are looking at our fellowship. And uh, being led by Hebrews uh, 10, verse 25, 24 to 25. Uh, yes. Let me just, uh, before I read the scripture, can I be allowed to define what is fellowship? Because this is what we are looking at today. It is actually the coming together, or the coming together, or worshiping together of people who have a shared belief, shared conviction, to receive, who are receiving shared understanding, shared teachings, and shared behaviors that is fellowship because there is so much in common that binds us our convictions our values our beliefs our understanding and our behaviors they must conform to a particular pattern that's fellowshipping that's what we'll be trying to do to one another yes now let's hear what the scripture says we have defined what fellowshipping is and let's hear what the scripture says I will read uh, Hebrews 10, verse 24 to 25, say, And let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds. Let us not give up meeting together as someone in the habit of, of, doing, of, of doing that. But let us encourage one another, and all the more as you see the day approaches. Hallelujah. So yes, this is our leading scripture today. He actually is imploring us to actually come together as people who share the same values, people who are supposed to have the same understanding, as people who are supposed to actually receive the same kind of teaching, as people who are supposed to have same beliefs, as people who are supposed to actually conform to a particular behavior, behaviors that are common and similar, that are required. So this is what we are looking at today. And uh, yes, what a fitting background there when you look at that scripture, it's telling us. And that scripture was talking to people when the author of Hebrews wrote, people were full of unbelief, they were full of an interest in pursuing Christianity. There was an apath that was actually setting in, in the church, in the people, in societies. So hence, the scripture came in to actually encourage them. The writer there in Hebrews is encouraging them. And uh, many believe it's Paul and uh, he is actually encouraging them here. So yes, that's the background under which we have that scripture. And uh, when you look at it, that background there, I want you to first see forward to today and look at the society today. When you do so, you realize the society has become more apathetic the society has become actually even the church. They are now full of people who are apathetic. People are no longer interested in coming together and fellowship. Men are actually saying, I can worship from my house. I can worship with my family. There is no need for me to go to church. I can access the same church service online like I'm doing now. Uh, yes, I'm not taking away the idea of an online church and uh, uh, you can access us online and listen to us right away. But there is also a need for you, brethren, let me say so, for you to actually go and congregate and come together with others and learn and share. Because that's what the scripture is saying there. So if you are one who is actually in that belief, you need to also fellowship with others. So if society is now becoming apathetic, if individuals or even Christians are now becoming apathetic, today I am going to actually address you, I'm speaking to you brethren, 
who is now become an apathetic Christian. And I want to address you today and say, brethren, that is not the right decision. Don't become uninterested. Don't become apathetic. You must always uh, persevere because that's the message of our fellowshipping. It points us to fellowship together, meaning we have to persevere in the ways of Jesus. So please, brethren, if you have become apathetic, don't be. I want you to turn back and remove the upper that's setting in. Hallelujah. So yes, if this is who I am speaking today and I'm talking to you, let's now go into the scripture and see why is it that I'm talking to you and say, go back and fellowship. So the first question that you need to answer and address in your mind is, why is fellowshipping true? Why is fellowshipping true? Am I talking of a fad? Am I talking of something that is outdated? Am I talking of something that is out-fashioned? No. Why is fellowship true? Let's hear what the scripture says, because the scripture t tells us in Hebrews uh, 10 verse 24 to 25. I'll pick out key uh, junctures or key words in those two verses, and we'll look at them and see why it is important that you fellowship. It actually starts by saying, let us consider how we may inspire one another on towards love and good deeds so you see in that first verse there 24 you can actually see that there is need for us to spar one another to encourage one another to push one another to motivate each other towards the love because christianity is all about expressing the love of jesus towards one another and this is why it is key according to the scripture there that we must always aspire one another towards love and good deeds because these are the behaviors we must also conform to the particular behaviors of a christian so you need to actually address one another and encourage one another to actually have the love of jesus towards each other and you also have behaviors that conform to that so it is very key brethren if you are now becoming apathetic i am saying let's go back to the scripture and see why fellowship is true and then the verse goes on to say as some of you are in the habit of doing, some of us are, not, are in the habit of not meeting. And this was as at that time when Hebrews was written. But I've said already that if you fast this one forward today, we have societies, we have Christians, we have become even more apathetic. People are no longer interested in the scripture. They are no longer interested in the Bible. They are no longer interested in Bible study. They are no longer interested in worshiping and coming together. They are no longer interested in gathering. But brethren, this is what it was then and I'm saying today is even more. And the scripture is telling us there are those in the habit of not uh, coming together. As it says, let us not give up meeting together. It is in verse 25 there. Let us not give up in meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing. This is who you are, brethren. You and you and I today, I'm addressing you because you have come to a point where you have become apathetic, or apathy is setting in. You have now said to yourself, there is no need for me to go and worship and fellowship with others because I can access the service online. I can access the church online. And as I said, yes, it's good to actually access online, but don't make it a habit. That's what you do every time. No, you need to actually go and meet with others because that's where you will get spot on that's where you will share you get spot on and sharing the love and showing the love and also good deeds they are actually conformed by doing so and encouraged by others don't be that one who give up meeting together with others because it is a habit that is actually against the bible the bible is saying so in verse 25 it even says we must encourage one another and all the more you see the day is approaching because the whole idea is fellowshipping is, is, is to say, why is it important? Because it is very key for you as a Christian on your journey, because if you don't get encouraged, if you don't come to share your values with those who share the same values with you, if you don't encourage to actually show the same love as Jesus did, if you don't get encouraged to actually show behaviors that conform to Christian life, then it definitely is you have allowed the upper to take you away and you will go. So it is very key that you see the scripture is saying so well there, that you need to understand that. It is also written in Matthew, if you read Matthew, 20, Matthew 18 verse 20, 
a verse that says, Where two or three are meeting together, I will be in your presence. So it means, what then happens when you don't go and meet in the church, when you can't be strengthened by the power of God, by the Holy Spirit? Because Matthew 18 verse 20 says, Where two of you are meeting together, then I will be among you. So it means the moment you go and meet with others, Jesus or God himself will be present. So when he is present, you receive the blessings, you receive the vitality, you receive the power, you receive the encouragement, you receive the strengthening. Because fellowship, like I said, it helps you to keep on track, keeping your values, keeping your ways, keeping on things that are godly. So you get the vitality of you keeping on, to, on that narrow path is actually fellowship. Where you go and get encouraged by others, taught by others, motivated by others. Yes. So scripture from our Hebrews 10 verse 25, verse 24 to 25, and Matthew 18 verse 20, they actually point to us as Christians that we should not be apathetic. That we must come together and fellowship together. That if you are on the verge of your telling yourself, telling yourself that I will fellowship from my house on my own, then it means you are wrong because that's what not the Bible advises. So the next question that I want to address is you and I, because we are in, in the verge, actually on the verge of uh, being apathetic. The question is. Why then should our fellowship uh, matter to you and I? Fellowship matters to you and I for the simple reason that we have established in Hebrews 10, Hebrews 10, verse 24 to 25. That within that, you need people to actually encourage you and motivate you towards the love of Jesus because you are supposed to treat one another with the love of Jesus. That you must also have goods that conform to what Jesus wants. And then you must also then also do what if you don't actually come together and fellowship with others, you will miss out on a very key point, which is the reason why you need to fellowship is because you want to achieve everlasting life. From fellowshipping, the ultimate goal is to achieve everlasting life. So if you are to achieve everlasting life, there are things that you need to do together with others. And fellowship comes as one that helps you to actually become one. Let's look at what here, Colossians 2, verses 2 and 3 say, which is quite a key ingredient that you need in terms of uh, fellowshipping. Colossians 2, verses 3, uh, verses 2 to 3. They say, now let's read Colossians 2. This is uh, 2 to 3. Right, it says, My purpose is that they may be encouraged. I want you to pay attention to they may be encouraged. They may be encouraged in their heart and united in love so that they may have the full riches of a complete understanding in order that they may know the mystery of, the, of God, namely Christ. So if you go to Colossians, this is why fellowship matters to you so much, brethren. You please do not meet what do not miss what Colossians 2, verse 2 to 3 are saying here. Because it matters a lot that you do fellowship. Because when you fellowship, this is where you actually have the encouragement in your heart. So that you actually remain united with others in love. So that when you have that, you have a full riches and complete understanding of complete understanding of the mystery of the of God, namely Jesus Christ, in whom all the hidden treasures of wisdom and knowledge are. So this is why fellowshipping is key. Because from fellowshipping, you're gonna go and be encouraged by others. From fellowshipping, you're going to receive the teachings, teachings that help you from those that are more experienced than you. They will teach you to experience more, to understand more values. And when you understand these values, they are values of our love in Jesus Christ, the deeds in Jesus Christ, the way a Christian is supposed to behave and all stuff. So when this happens, you start to actually receive and get the riches of the kingdom of heaven, the mystery of the kingdom of heaven which from Colossians 2 verse 3, it's all deposited in Jesus Christ himself. 
Because from that scripture it tells us, all the treasures of understanding and wisdom, they are all in Christ and you can only receive them when you come together in fellowship and share. So you can only receive that encouragement. You can only receive the teaching. You can only receive that knowledge when you are together with others. Because remember what Matthew 18 verse 20 says. It says, when you meet two and three meet, I'll be there. This is Jesus. The Spirit will be there with you. When you come together in fellowship with others, you are there so that you get encouraged in your heart by the Spirit, and then you get united in love. And you, when you do so, you will then start to receive the full riches of the mystery of the kingdom of heaven. What is the mystery of the kingdom of heaven? According to Colossians 2, verse 3 to, 5, to, verse 2 to 3, the mystery of the kingdom of heaven is Jesus. Why is Jesus the mystery? It is because we have heard from that scripture that all the understanding and all the knowledge are actually deposited in Jesus himself. So you need to actually come together and fellowship with others so that God himself will be present in us. And when he is present in us, all the mystery is now revealed through Jesus Christ because fellowshipping that we do, we do it in two ways. Remember, you, fellow, you can fellowship with your God when I want one. You can also fellowship with your brethren as fellow Christians. But what is key now is this unitary fellowship that God is speaking about. That when you come, the two of you as fellow Christians, when you come together, two or three, you are now enjoying the fellowship with God. So it is at that moment that when you do enjoy the fellowship with God, that God brings the mystery of the kingdom of heaven, who is Jesus Christ, that you start to understand all things that are actually hidden. So when you do so, you are opened in your mind, opened in your heart, encouraged in your heart, encouraged in your mind. So this is what God wants us to do. So what is it for you and our brethren, the apathetic one? And I'm saying do not move away from fellowshipping because it is key. You will miss a vital ingredient that you need, the ingredient that God will be among you. God will be actually between you. God will be among you and strengthen you in your hearts. And you will be also be encouraged and you, you, you will be unified in love. And your deeds and actions will be also unified accordingly. So when that happens, what then happens to a Christian? This is when they start to receive more teaching. This is when they are encouraged. This is when they start to develop spiritually and they actually mature spiritually. So if you don't do so, then you actually suffer. One thing that I want you to take away today, it is when you do not fellowship with others, you are in the habit of fellowshiping on your own at home, you become an underweight. And when you become an underweight, you can't fight the devil because the devil is a weight. Let me take you to a boxing, boxing scenario. Why do you think they say when you want to fight, people are put on scale to weigh their weight? It is weight for weight, light weight for light weight, heavy weight for heavy weight. They never actually cause a light weight to fight a heavy weight because these two are not even measured in terms of their weight. So if they do so, there is an unfair advantage there. There is unfair competition. So I'm saying to you, brethren, you are apathetic there. I am as well today. So I'm speaking to you and I today and say, if you go on like that, you're actually becoming an underweight yourself. And when you're an underweight, you can't fight the devil because the devil is a half weight. So this is why the scripture says to you, you need to come together and fellowship with others. So when you come together and fellowship with others, you are now revealed and joined to the mystery of the kingdom. The mystery we say is Jesus. So when you say have Jesus, you now have the power of the Holy Spirit. And remember what he says is, is the power of the Holy Spirit that you need. So when you have that power, you become actually a heavy weight. So when you become the heavy weight by having the Jesus in you or the Holy Spirit in you, by coming in fellowship with others, as you are developed spiritually, that you become better and you grow spiritually and you mature, then you become a heavy weight. Because this battle, you and I, we know it's spiritual. So when you become a spiritual heavy weight, now you can now go on and confront the devil. If you are not a spiritual heavy weight, you can't confront the devil because you will be defeated. Remember the story of Jesus in the story of the gays man? He was a, a spiritual heavyweight. When the devil came, Jesus fought in all scenarios using the, the, the spiritual power. 
This is what you need. So brethren, do not make yourself an underweight. Do not make yourself an underweight by not actually fellowshipping. Stop fellowshipping on your own at home because you make yourself an underweight. When you become an underweight, you can't find the devil. You need to equip yourself and have the right, the relevant weight so that you match the devil and actually be actually overweight compared to the devil. Then you can fight and conquer. This is how Jesus conquered. So yes, this is why it is key for you and I to fellowship. So do not be apathetic. If you want to grow spiritually and develop, there is no way other than fellowshipping because from fellowshipping we have seen, you are encouraged in your heart and they are united in, in love and they are united in spirit. You are conformed in your behaviors. You will be sharing some values. You will be sharing some understanding. So when you do so, you become a heavy weight. So I don't want you and I to become underweight. If you become lightweight, then you can't win the devil. I want you to be a heavy weight so that we go and confront the, the, the devil there. Yes, this is something. If we go, let's hear what the scriptures say in Jonah. Uh, first John chapter one verse. Uh, first John chapter one verse seven. It actually encourages us as well to do the fellowshipping. First John chapter uh, one verse seven say. First John chapter one verse seven says. Uh, but if we walk, let me just read from uh, John chapter five. John, John chapter one. First John chapter one verse five to seven. Walk in the light, that's what he says there. So this is the message we have heard from, the, from him and declared to you. God is light. In him, there is a dark, in, in, in him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship, yeah? if we, we saw there is need for you and I to have fellowship with God and as much as others. If we claim to have fellowship with him, yet walk in darkness, we lie and do not live by the truth. So it is key that you live by the truth. And the truth is only achieved by you fellowshipping with others, fellowshipping with your God, and then you are encouraged, and your heart is encouraged, and they are also united in love. So this is what it needs to be. So, But if you walk in, the, in light, as he is light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. So you hear from verse 7 there. We need to walk in light. And if we walk in light, that means we are fellowshipping with one another. And when you fellowship with one another, the blood of Jesus will come and wash us. And if you are sinful, you can only actually be washed your sin by the blood of Jesus. So that only happens when you walk in light and you are fellowshipping with others. So it is very key that you fellowship with your God and fellowship with others. So when you fellowship with your God, you are now united with him. Fellowship with others, you are also united to them. And then it forms a unit of purpose that God wants between himself and his people. And when that happens, he will be among you. And when he is among you, then he strengthens you with his power. The power of the Holy Spirit and you become a heavyweight. You are no longer a lightweight. So this is what is saying there. So you need to actually walk in light and be encouraged and walk by fellowship with one another. Brethren, this is the main message today from the scripture. So what is your takeaway today? What is your take home today? The take home is fellowshipping is biblical, is by the scripture that we have read today from our, uh, uh, Hebrews 10 verse 24 to 25, from Matthew 18 verse 20, from uh, 1 John chapter 1 verse uh, 5 to 7, you can actually see that it is actually biblical that you worship and fellowship with others. What is the danger of you not to fellowship with others? You become a lightweight. When you become a lightweight, the devil will come and actually snatch you or defeat you, and then you'll be defeated. Why do you take yourself away from fellowship with others? Because we have said you must grow spiritually, and the vitality, the spiritual vitality of you is fellowshipping. And when you fellowship with others, you receive the spiritual vitality because God will strengthen you. God will then strengthen your heart and also unite you in the love and all stuff. And then the Holy Spirit will be you. And all the mystery of the kingdom of heaven will be opened up to you because you will be 
following Jesus and he opens the mystery and the understanding of the kingdom of heaven. When you do so, you can now see the long life that you expect at the end. That you want to live long, you want eternal life, you want to, to live forever. It is there you will see it at the end. Hallelujah. So what is your take home today? Number one. The Christian gen, do not make yourself a life weight. Not a lightweight, but become a half weight by walking in fellowship with others so that the Holy Spirit and all the knowledge of the kingdom of heaven will be open to you. The knowledge and understanding will be open to you. Number two, you can only become, uh, you need fellowshiping because you need, it is actually the tonic for spiritual vitality so that you actually grow spiritually. So if you don't fellowship, I don't see how you would grow as a Christian. I don't see how you have the vitality to actually grow your spirit. Because you cannot, when you are not linked, when you are not connected to God and others. So you need to fellowship so that you become part of that group where you share things. Remember Acts 2, verse 42. When the template of us as Christians was given by the apostles when they were actually together. Acts 2, verse 42. They were together sharing the Christian doctrine, the apostle doctrine, and breaking bread and all stuff. So they were together to share common things, share common understanding, share common knowledge, share common behavior. This is how it is. And when they were together like that, remember the Holy Spirit came and they were filled with the Holy Spirit. This is what God says today. This is what the Hebrews 10 verse 24 to 25 say. When we are together, that's what Matthew 18 verse 20 say. With the two of you, two or three together, the Holy Spirit will be among us and then we are strengthened. So you cannot go, do, go, go away and do away with fellowshipping. Stop doing that. Stop making yourself a lightweight. You are not going anywhere. Go back and fellowship with others. Yes, watch online sermons is good, but you also need to go and fellowship with others. Stop fooling yourself. Stop teaching yourself. Stop saying, I'm okay. You need a change. You need to belong. You need to go and share. You need to be taught. You need to be encouraged. You need to be grown spiritually. So go back to the church. That is the only way for all those who are apathetic. Please move away from that and remove that and interest you have in the, in the word. You must go back and fellowship and belong to a church. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.